Hello and welcome to my channel and today we're going to talk about a very important topic and that is Finnish Midsummer. So what is Midsummer? Or we often say that in Finnish language, Johannes, what does that mean? When it is celebrated? What kind of celebrations we have? We're going to talk about it. You might have heard the word the White Nights or White Nights Magic or Finnish Midsummer. This all means the same thing. So what is it basically? Basically, it's a national holiday in Finland, the biggest celebration or event for the Finnish summer and it starts usually from 20th June to 26th June like somewhere between you have uh, the midsummer evening and midsummer day. This year 24th of June would be the midsummer evening and then 25th will be the midsummer day. So basically it is the longest, brightest and warmest day of the year. So this is the day when Finns enjoy uh, you know, the longest daylight. This is the hottest day of the year. That's how you can put it. And in few regions in Finland, the sun never goes down. The sun stays up even in the middle of the night. So that is the reason Finland is called land of midnight sun. For example, in Lapland, you can find many videos, many pictures and events. And if you've been there yourself, you can check that. Even in other regions where sun sets down a little bit, but it doesn't go down completely. So there is no darkness there. So that gives the effect of white night. Even in the night, you can go out and see the light there. So it's like very lovely to experience and very hard to explain. But uh, this is what it is. So the longest day of the year, uh, national holiday, Finns start off their you know, summer vacation. Usually they move from the cities to their cottages near the lakes, which are called Mokki. And they stay there with their friends and family and they celebrate that time lovely. So you just try to be close to the nature, you do some berry picking, you light up a fire, which we say like bonfire or in Finnish we say kokko, a big fire in the middle of the lake. In some cities you also also see that the city administration arranged that uh, big fire kokko. But unfortunately due to the uh, corona thing, it was not done in the last couple of years properly. So I'm very hopeful this year we're going to have a big kokko in our city and then in other places too. So from where the celebration comes from, it comes from the pagan tradition. Uh, this is to appease the god of uh, weather and thunder. The name is Okko. So to appease Okko, this celebration was done. And it is not only celebrated in Finland, it is celebrated in other Nordic countries and then in Baltic states, then in Belarus and in Russia as well. And the idea is uh, when we appease the god of uh, uh, weather and thunder, Okko, then in the return, you get good crops and fertility. Now I'm going to tell you what to do when you are here in Finland for the midsummer. You can do many things. Like imagine yourself uh, being around uh, in a Finnish cottage near to the lake and the nature is around you. So what you can do, you can go out for bay picking. Then you can have sauna and bathing. You can have, uh, you can dip in the lake during the day or maybe evening after the party, you can have post party swims too. That's available. Plus a lot of grilling, a lot of barbecue going on and you just have fun and enjoy that beautiful time of the year with your friends and loved ones. Apart from that, uh, the couples particularly and Finns, they cast their love spell, they do their thing. So more Finns can come in this world, you know what I mean? So that is also done in that time. Plus the church wedding are on the rise. More people start getting married in that time of the year. And one more thing, which is a caution for you, that obviously in that time, there is another thing which is on the rise and these are mosquitoes, particularly on the countryside. There are a lot of mosquitoes in the evening. So be, be careful when you are celebrating midsummer with your friends and family or if you're visiting here, be careful to use some protection, get some, you know, mos mosquito repellent cream or something. So you will be fine there. Talking about the tradition. So when you set up the table uh, for, the, for eating, so the tablecloth should be the linen cloth. And then on top of it, in the centerpiece, you should have the wild flowers plus the bush leaf around it. Bush leaf has a very important part to play in the midsummer. So that's there. Then you have the smoke uh, salmon available. Then you have the white, uh, uh, you know, grilled white fish, grilled sausages, uh, pickled herring. So these are the special dishes you have. And then the new uh, crop of uh, potatoes, the fresh potatoes uh, with drilled butter and salt. So these are the kind of options you have. Uh, when we talk about the Johannes uh, uh, Poita, that <laughs> party table, there you have everything to eat. And with friends and family, you can really have a go and enjoy that. Uh, now some other traditions too. In the pagan time, there was a tradition that in the midsummer, the, uh, the young girls 
they need to go to the well and then they sleep there in the vial. So middle of the night, they get uh, some kind of uh, dream and where they can see uh, the image of the person they are going to get married. I don't know much details about it, but yeah, it is a tradition for that. So the young girls see the reflection. Previously, it was not like mirrors, it was like a well, so where you can see that in the well. Uh, well, I don't know, it still carries on or no, but there are a lot of other pagan things attached to this uh, to, to this tradition. But at the moment nowadays, it is just a party thing. It's like people go out and have party, have drinks and spend time with friends and family and the loved ones. So that's all about it, about Finnish Midsummer. I tried to be brief and precise and give you the information, nothing else. So happy Midsummer to all of you. Who are you? Hannos Takai Kille. Moi moi. Moikka.